Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Lisa with Lisa Cape and Quilts and today we're making flying geese units and we're gonna do it two different ways. Okay, and Miss Andrea, we've been talking over on Facebook while you're making your t-shirt quilt. I want you to stick around to the end of today's video because I'm actually going to join two flying geese units together and I think maybe I'll share some tips with you that will be helpful in your t-shirt quilt assembly. Okay, so stick around to the end. But for everybody else, yes, two different ways to make flying geese units. And the first method we're gonna do, we're making one flying geese unit at a time. Then we're gonna switch gears and we're gonna make four flying geese units at one time. Now the flying geese units we're making in today's video, they're gonna measure finished at 12 and a half by six and a half inches tall. Okay, so 12 and a half inches wide by six and a half inches tall. And I'll give you those measurements to make that sized unit in this video. But if you're wondering about different sizes, I do have a guide. There's a link to my Etsy shop uh, down below in the description box. This guide gives you five different common size flying geese units. And it also gives you a two page illustration chart walking you through the steps that I'm gonna share in this video with you. But if you're like me, that chart is helpful. That little guide is helpful to walk you through the steps, but I actually like to see it being done. And so that's what I'm doing in today's video. And I hope that you find this really helpful. Again, two different ways to make flying geese units. And we're gonna get started with the method that makes one at a time. So let's get started. Okay, for this first method, I wanna show you. What you're gonna do is you're gonna cut uh, a background square at 12 and a half by six and a half. All right, so that's your base piece. That's gonna be the triangle right in the middle of your flying geese unit, right? The largest triangle right in the middle. Then you're gonna take two pieces of fabric that are six and a half by six and a half. These are gonna be your smaller triangles in the corners, right? Two pieces. I want you to flip these triangles over and on both of them, we're going to draw a line from corner to corner, right down at the middle. Now this method does create a little bit of waste, okay? When we draw that line right down the middle, we're only using this section in our flying geese unit. This piece will be cut away. So to avoid any waste, we're gonna make this piece into a half square triangle. So while we just drew our first line from corner to corner, I want you to measure over half an inch and draw a second line. This is gonna create a half square triangle and eliminate any waste with this first method that I'm showing you. Okay, so we have two lines, one from the corner that's gonna be our sewing line for our flying geese unit. But then we're gonna sew a second line while we're at the sewing machine and you'll see that here in a second. Again, corner to corner on your other piece. What's really fun is with these half square triangles that we're cutting off, you could make a border for your quilt with these pieces and you're piecing them without doing too much additional work, right? And it eliminates us just throwing these scraps away. Corner to corner, and then half an inch over, draw another line. You might want to start your fabrics before you even cut them out to these sizes, okay? That's gonna help a lot in eliminating any uh, stretch. Well, I say it, it will help. Uh, you still want to be careful not to stretch your pieces out of shape, but starching your fabrics before you cut them out will help a lot. So we're going to bring this to the sewing machine and we're going to sew. You will take your first piece and line it up with all of the raw edges, just like that. Okay. We will sew right on the line from corner to corner. While we're there, we're going to go ahead and sew this line too. Okay, and once we do that, we're going to come back to the pre pressing board or the cutting mat. And we're going to cut right down the middle. So here we are at the sewing machine. Make sure that these edges are lined up nice and perfect, right? 
right along that edge. We're gonna sew this first line, the corner to corner line. We're gonna take that off of the sewing machine. And while we're right here, we're gonna go ahead and sew this second line. Okay, so there's the first part of our flying geese unit. Let's go cut this. All right, here's our first side. We are gonna cut right in the middle. That should give us a quarter inch seam allowance on both, both of those seams, right? Right down the middle and we're cutting. Okay, with our little scrap left over, we have pieced a half square triangle. You're gonna press that seam and save this for another project or make a cute little border for your quilt with all of these half square triangles. Our first seam is done for our flying geese unit. We're gonna just flip this over. I'm gonna take this to the iron and give that a press. I'll be right back. Once you have that side pressed, we're bringing in the second six and a half by six and a half inch piece. And we are lining that up with the raw edges. And again, oops, make sure your uh, smaller seam goes towards that corner. <laughs> there we go. So we will sew from corner to corner, and then we're gonna sew this additional line, making our half square triangle. So here we are, everything is lined up nice and pretty. We are sewing this way. You can even put a pin or two in here to keep these pieces from shifting around. There's our first seam. Now let's go ahead and make this uh, half square triangle. And now we will cut this apart. So here we are. We're gonna cut right in the middle. That'll give us quarter of an inch and quarter of an inch seam allowance on both pieces. So when we're done, you should end up with two half square triangles for another project or a cute border and one a flying geese unit. We still have to press this side. Let me go do that and I'll be right back. Okay, here we are all pressed. And one thing I want to show you is when you're done, the little tips of the triangle do come down to the very edges of uh, the bottom of your flying geese unit. And you will have a little space right here at the tip of this middle bigger triangle, right? This tip should measure a quarter of an inch from the very tip to the raw edge of your flying geese unit. So that's a quarter of an inch right there. That's gonna be your seam allowance when you join this flying geese unit to the one right above or to another block. This, when you're done, should measure six and a half inches tall and 12 and a half inches wide. So that's the method to make them one at a time with this method, you get one flying geese unit and two half square triangles 
And uh, let's move over. I'm going to show you a different method on how to make these uh, four at a time. And with that method, there are no half square triangles left over. So let's move over and show you that one. Okay, for this next method of flying geese, these five pieces are going to make four flying geese units that measure 12 and a half by six and a half when finished. Uh, and we're gonna make four at a time. So this is what you need for this method. You need one a big square of fabric. The measurements are gonna sound kind of funny with this method. This big square needs to be 13 and a quarter by 13 and a quarter. So that's your big square. Then you're gonna need four smaller pieces of fabric and these measure six and seven eighths by six and seven eighths. So carefully cut out those pieces. The first thing we're gonna do is we're going to take these four smaller pieces and on the wrong side, the back side of the fabric, again, we're gonna draw one line from corner to corner. And we're gonna do that on all four pieces. No second line with this method. Whoops, I'm drawing it on the on the pretty side. <laughs> I thought this was a solid, so we're messing up. Okay, on the wrong side. That's okay. Okay, now that we have our lines drawn on all four, we're gonna set two of these aside and work with those in a minute. We're gonna take the base, the big square. We're gonna put that with the pretty side facing up. <clears throat> we're gonna take one of our smaller squares and align it right in a corner, right on the edge, just like that. Nice and pretty lined up. We're gonna take our second square and we're gonna line it up to this bottom corner right down here. Now because these pieces are awkward and larger, I am going to throw a couple pins in there. I'm gonna throw some pins in this top square and this bottom square. We're gonna bring this to the sewing machine. And this time, instead of sewing right on the line that we drew from corner to corner, we're gonna be sewing two seams. Both seams are gonna be on either side of the line that we drew with a quarter inch seam allowance. So set a quarter inch seam allowance on your sewing machine and let's bring this over. All right, quarter inch seam allowance. We're gonna be sewing our first seam. Lining this line up with the very edge of my presser foot. We're gonna to try to stay as exact on this line as possible. Now you'll see this other square is just lining right up over top of the other one. That middle line, they should just meet right in the middle. Once we come to the edge, we're going to take this off. And we're going to flip everything back the other way and sew down the other side. Now we're gonna go cut this apart. We're gonna take these pins out first. Now 
Now you'll see why it doesn't so much matter that I drew on the wrong side because we're not saving this middle line. That's going to be our cut line where we're separating these two pieces. We are lining that right up from corner to corner and separating these two halves. And that will give us a quarter inch seam allowance on both pieces. Now we're gonna take this over to the pressing board and we're going to press, flipping these two smaller triangles over, just like that, okay? When you're pressing these seams, you can finger press them over to the side. Just be mindful, pay attention and make sure you're not stretching these fabrics out of shape. You can even use a little bit of steam if you need to, to get them to lay nice and flat. Now that these are pressed, we're gonna be adding these last two squares, right? So we're going to flip the pretty side down and we're going to be matching it up down at this bottom corner. Nice, right along that edge. As exact as you can get it because it does make a difference. I'm going to throw a couple pins in there. What you'll notice is that the tip of this triangle does extend beyond this seam that we sewed and even into this little V section, right? That's normal. That's what you're looking for. We're gonna do this for both pieces. Throw a couple pins in, and we're going back to the sewing machine one last time for today. And again, we're gonna be sewing a quarter inch seam on both sides of this line, and this will be our cutting line to separate those two pieces. Coming back, we're going to take these pins out. And we're cutting right on that line that we drew right down the middle. So there's two pieces. We're going to cut this other one. And there's two pieces. Now when you press this, this should come over just like that. Again, you should have your quarter inch uh, seam allowance right at the tip. And uh, these corners should come right to the edge. Now I'm going to go press these so you can see what that looks like. Again, I just like to finger press the smaller triangle right on over and press that seam. You're gonna to wanna to make sure, again, that everything stays nice and square. This unit should be an exact rectangle as you're pressing. Press each four of the units and we'll meet back. Okay, back from pressing, here is our four flying geese units, and these should measure 12 and a half. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 and a half by six and a half inches tall. One, two, three, four, five, six and a half. 
Yeah, I could press that one a little bit better, but six and a half. So there is the method for four at a time. Now this part is for Miss, Miss Andrea. We're gonna take two of these because the block you're working on, you're joining two uh, flying geese units to make one block that should measure 12 and a half by 12 and a half, I believe. I believe that's what you're shooting for. So we're gonna go ahead and do that with two of these flying geese units. I'm going to flip that over just like that. I think one of the key things is just making sure that these raw edges are nice and lined up, right? You can even throw some pins in there if that helps you keep everything lined up. We're gonna take this over to the sewing machine and sew this seam with a quarter inch seam allowance. I think that one of the keys when piecing your quilt blocks is making sure that that quarter inch seam allowance is really accurate. And that seam allowance could change depending on the thread and the fabric you're using, right? If you're using a little bit of a thicker thread or thicker fabric, that eats up space in your seam allowance, creating a little bit of a smaller block when finished, right? Also, when sewing this seam, I want you to see I was right above the tip in that stitch line. Can you see that? It should be right above the tip in that stitch line. So when we open this up, that seam should rest right at the tip of this triangle. I'm gonna go press this and we're gonna measure it. So here we are, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 and a half. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 and a half. Be very careful that you're not overstretching this when you're pressing. Again, starching your fabrics before you ever even cut anything out will help to eliminate that stretchy and wonkiness that you can get while you're sewing and cutting and pressing, that will help a lot, okay? And uh, check your quarter inch seam allowance. They make all kinds of tools, uh, like Madam Sew has uh, the seam guide roller. You can set uh, your quarter inch seam allowance and check it. Check it before you even start sewing. I have the seam guide uh, in my Etsy shop. You've got your quarter inch seam guide you also have a scant quarter inch seam guide. Okay, so if you're, de if you're coming up with smaller blocks, you might need to use that scant quarter of an inch. And then there's uh, a little test card to show you how to test your seam allowance before you get to this part. But if you're doing this and you're coming up shorter, try using a scant quarter inch. That's gonna be really helpful. So I hope this helps Miss Andrea. Um, once you're done, okay, you will have this, this gap on both sides of this top uh, flying geese unit. That is your quarter inch seam allowance. So when you join this to your t-shirt quilt blocks, that's gonna be your seam allowance. And then the new tip of your triangle should come right to that seam where you're gonna join it to your t-shirt block. This bottom one won't have that right, because there's nothing joined to it yet. But once this block is joined to a t-shirt, you will have this same gap down here at that point, okay? This will finish a 12 inch by 12 inch block in your quilt. So I hope this is really helpful. And uh, if not, send me another message. I'm glad to help. See you soon, bye.